All right, welcome back, part 28. Um, this is gonna be just a little bit more on the back end. I've done the rungs now, the bit you sit on. So now I've just got to start working on that tailpiece on the back. Uh, a few of you have asked a question, how are you gonna lift it off if anything goes wrong? I thought about that, no problem. Um, the section, which I'll show you in a minute, basically the section that's underneath the lights at the moment that will prevent it from being lifted off there can be cut away. And I need to weld uh, a loop over them so that effectively that holds the bottom rung in place uh, that'll all come clear that's what today is going to be about um, so the backlight tunnel uh, the next kind of section if you like is going to be the backlight tunnel the French tunnel for the backlight which will be tapered so you can see it slightly from an elevation at the sides obviously it can't be tunneled down too deep uh, otherwise you can't see it properly and I plan to silver the inside of it so effectively it will have an illusion of giving a great big backlight it'll be that little tiny thing down inside so it should work if it doesn't then I'll have to think of something else I can if necessary if the French whole French thing doesn't work I can literally mount the light further back so it is um, where the French tunnel is it'll simply sit at the face of it instead of down inside so it's not the end of the world just mount it on a block easy though so, today we're just going to crack on see what happens um, Stick around, stay tuned, and enjoy. All right, this is the journey so far. Um, got the rungs done. Uh, a lot of you have said it was a shame if you could see this in some way, ride it like that. That'd be very cool, you know, very cool indeed. In fact, apart from covering the battery up, and I don't know, maybe you could make some sort of lid to go over that, I don't know, whatever. If I could shrink, heat shrink, clear plexiglass over it, that'd be cool. But it is a rat bike, let's remember. And that's where it's going to be. It'll all get painted matte black when it's done. And it's it's more about this frame being strong and having good integrity and giving the right shape and being reliable and not looking like a piece of bodged up rat bike stuff like a lot of it is that you see out there and actually looking like some thoughts gone into it. That's more important to anything else. So hopefully that will happen when it's done. Um, thanks to all of you for your great comments. I've decided not to brace this. I'm going to leave these flexing. There's a little bit of flex in them. Not much. Um, but enough, they won't break. In flexing, they won't break. The fiberglass will stiffen them up a great deal. And if there is a little bit of flex in it, then that's all good because it makes it a little bit more comfortable. Um, I don't think there will be though, to be honest. And they are quarter inch rod and there's what, you know, plenty of them. So ultimately I don't think there'll be any problem and I don't think I need to brace them. So today is gonna be a little bit of this. I've had this, obviously this is the original bottom bar around here and this naturally sits under the indicator. So it's gonna, prevent it being lifted off so the general plan is I need to cut from here to at least kind of here like that so it can be lifted off from behind etc and that will then leave the idea is it will leave that poking out of the tailpiece little peeking out of a little gap which will look quite smart because that's what I wanted for them and that means bracing over the top and down that side so that I can then cut the bottom piece out. Just cut it out now, which is going, so that won't be any good. It's got to be effectively braced over. And then when I bring the bodywork down, it will just find whatever is the right way that looks at the time to go in there. Same thing with the backlight. Obviously I can leave that one in because that's going to form the entry to the tunnel that goes down to the light. But this piece underneath, this brace is going to obviously hit under the light there. So I think probably cut that section out just by bracing around here like that to give it the strength it needs and then obviously the space there so that, that lifts off the light. So today's really all about that bit, hoop, hoop, so that I can lift the whole thing off and hopefully as a test when it's done, I'm gonna try and unbolt the thing and lift it off and see if that works and then where it doesn't, where it catches, I can dress and address the issues so that I can make sure it just lifts off before I carry on too much. So there we are, that's what's gonna to happen today. First job, Bend up some of them. All right. I'm gonna use these thick bits of quarter inch, I reckon, because in some respects, they're being thicker and they're gonna brace the back end or they'll brace that gap quite well. Was triangulate it I guess something like triangulation and this is just like any other a case of trial and error obviously I want a slow curve not quite a, not a sharp corner so just bending it 
by hand. If you use a spanner to spanner, you get a corner, sharp corner. So just want to feel for it as it goes. All this is just literally making it up as I go along. None of it adheres to any plan or doctrine or teaching or anything. This might be a load of crap, <laughs> but it's working. It's working. Like all of it, the first one will be quite, uh, it's going to be slightly short on one side. The first one will take the time, and I'll just do the second one to the first one. Good thing with this as well, uh, this steel work hardens quite easily, so as time goes on, as you keep, as I bend it, this gets stronger, which is good, what we need, it won't flex. Right, after much modification of that, grinding that inside edge, uh, one, two, three, about four different bandages, it's going to go in there. Um, get welded against the bracket, the frame. I can weld it to the brackets. So there's lots of opportunity to get that good and strong there. Um, and then literally weld it to the back of the frame here. So that will be a good point. I'll probably play with some strength on that. And then this bottom section from here can be cut off completely so that I get a gap of at least that much, which will be all I need to lift it over the indicator arm. That will just come clean off. Um, and it follows quite nicely the line of the oops, lens cap. It follows quite nicely, hopefully, what the line will be when it comes to building the hump um, but it's pretty vital that that's quite strong so I've chosen to snuck it right down over as close as possible and use thick rod which will give it strength because if I'm cutting out this bottom frame and there's going to be a gap here although there's fiberglass in the top and that will give it strength that will definitely be a weak point so that's the easiest way to cure that nice strong rod curved over nice and snucked in and ground in there so that it's nice and flush now I'll get a good fit on that on the outside and then literally once that's the case I can just take the four bolts out there and that one and that will just lift clean off like the whole thing hopefully will lift off that's the aim anyway and as it's fabrication you can make it do that just as you go if it doesn't then you adjust and modify right now you've got to make one for the other side
inwards as well just so it lays completely flat against the washer Preserve all the work we did on the electrics. And those little relays, all that hard work. I need to go melting any of that. Not today, Josephine. Protect my power. No spots going in there. Well up. Okay. Let's see if this works. pretty vital that this particular part stays absolutely in the right place. Uh, it doesn't move. Kind of almost overwhelming these because I want them to be uber strong. That quarter rod effectively uh, being bent round, curved so much as work hardened and become quite tough so it needs so it's not going to flex a lot so so uh, I want to make sure that I want to make sure that it, it doesn't break at the welds if, if something doesn't flex then then the welds are, are the first casualty if it's uh, a little bit too tough um, so just kind of welding a curve in it Give it every strength. Fire up, boy. Okay. Set the other side up. Well, that one. Okay, bye Joyce. Yeah. Now. 
Let's get some leather socks. Catching fire. Come down. I think, like I said in a couple of the comments, people are asking about it being, you know, if you grind the welds back, does it make him weak? Well, it does, obviously, because there's less metal, but uh, this is not uh, flux wire, this is just regular wire, and I use oxygen O2, so CO2 rather, and uh, it makes them a bit stronger. Now, ugly as sin, because I want loads of strength in there, so I put a triangle piece across, and that's then the mount beefed right up to hell, and then a really strong piece of steel over, and a good beef weld on that side as well. Just over welded it, all three sides. Same as that one. Where are we? Even there. Loads of weld. Just built it up, and built up a big triangulated weld. Now, the idea of this is, I shall put um, um, boring I know but that when that comes to bolt in the plastic or fiberglass will come around that leaving a hole so effectively I'll be get down to it but what I'll use is a tube um, I can't find them right now but in amongst this like, I've got some little metal tubes um, and they'll go over the allen head uh, even there hand eye coordination um, they'll go over the allen head and just tack in gently just a little tiny tack to hold them so that the bolt mount or the mount bolts will go down inside a tube which will look quite a trick but anyway for now that's the indicators the idea is that as you can see now they poke out from what's going to be the fairing as that bodywork comes round in this way uh, it's going to come down and finish there and I'll cut this section here out um, probably only need to cut out I guess about an inch and a half of it just from the back of the mount there to about here just to leave the weld in place for strength just about an inch and a half because all it's got to come up over is that which is about half inch of neck so literally that can then just lift off so right, next job cut these out Right, so that concludes that fun and games. Now hopefully that answers the question you guys that were asking, how are you gonna get the back off? You can see now that the stalks are here. Effectively, where are we? Even put the camera in the right place. Stalks are there. So effectively, right in the middle of that gap. And the idea is that that will take the bolt out. Sorry, camera work is shit without Penny. Um, so you just take that bolt out and the whole thing will just lift off. And as that, that these I'll tidy them up. I've just filed them to stop cutting myself on them for now. Um, but both sides, same that side there. Effectively now, that loops over the indicator in a nice safe way. So that can literally um, lift clear. There we go. 
and as also quite a nice byproduct is that they just they both poke out quite nicely so they'll poke out the side of the tailpiece literally and mounted firmly inside rather than screwed to the plastic which i think is a bit shit it's got to be done right there we are all right the next thing i've been standing looking at this now the height of that is absolutely correct because it's correct the same height as the tank and that's that's right that's as it should be because when it's off the paddock stand it will it will be lower it will be one long flat plane and that's correct but what it is it's a little bit cottage loaf not much i mean literally five mil not even that so the last job for today i'm just gonna drop the disc through the center of there and bring it together a little bit just to bring that arch in because it's a bit like i said it's a bit afro haircut at the minute and that needs to be just a bit more upright and curved in it's just annoying me. So I'm going to do that and we'll wrap it up for today. All right, I'm on the center of the light. Now this particular issue doesn't matter if it's 100% in the middle. I just need to make a little gap about 6 mil wide. I reckon that's all it needs to bring it in just to get rid of this, this curve out which is happening. It's just irritating. It needs to come in a bit. Um, and once it's in, that will actually bring them down as you bring it together. But being wire, I can just lift it back up and then get the height exact again. a lot more it needed a lot more than I thought it's a good three quarters of an inch there which is cool so I just need to bring them up Level. and then bring them in that's better all right so that concludes number 28 we're um moving ever forward that's got the ability now for it to be lifted off so as far as the indicators are concerned uh, for the next one i've got to make uh the world the the french tunnel that's going to take a little bit more head scratch and i want some time to just consider that um this one was good because it means that 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 issue i was considering it whether to you know put a triangle over them or put an arch or whatever and it seems to have worked out best that way sometimes when you're not sure how to do a job i find it's best to just crack on and have a go and as you start you'll work it out as you go along it does work for me anyway um i can't work to plans i find it boring intensely boring and often you modify and you see a plan for what it is and you improve on it as you go so sometimes it's better to just leave it make it up as you go along as long as you take your time and you get to a point where you're stuck stop and that's where i'm now i just want to consider how to do the back loop how to do it right um and if I do it and I do it wrong or I cut it out, it's just time wasted and our time is ticking. What I want to do with this, I'd like to take it to Brightona. Brightona is a big bike show. If you look at um, last year's video, which is about October time, I think, um, we've got the show coming up again shortly. And me and Penny and the gang, we'd like to get down there, uh, the Idiot Collective, and have a good day out. And I'd like to take the Bandit. I really would. I'll take it just with the back end done. It won't have the front done, um, purely because <laughs> I've eaten three weeks three months uh, just trying to do this thing uh, so I'm just trying to thrash on with this I've got this week off to do pretty much only this and a few other bits and pieces so I'm going to be making progress as much as I can 
hopefully I can take this thing to Brightona, which would be pretty cool. It's nice. It's also a good motivator when you're getting a bike ready for a show. As any of you know who've done that before, when you've got a rally or a show coming up that you want to debut the bike at, especially a big one like Brightona, it really is a good motivator. So I'm getting cracking. I'm going to go and upload this. Thanks for watching. Any questions, ask. Appreciate that. And thanks for all the comments and support. Always means a great deal. Me and Penny absolutely love it. It's, to us, it's half of it. It's sitting, answering all the comments and making friends out of you amazing people. So thanks very much for watching Dover's Garage. This has been number 28. Take it easy, ride safe. See you next time.